and welcome. This week we have Super Bowl news from Anheuser-Busch, we have a craft beer shout out from the Madison Square Garden, and Sierra Nevada has installed Tesla battery packs. I am your host Chris Hardy, and this is the Straight Beer News for the week ending January 22nd, 2017. This week at Madison Square Garden we almost had a new sport created, um, I, I, I'd call it ba basket beer. Kind of like the uh, the movie with basketball with a combination of baseball and basketball. We almost had basket beer game played at Madison Square Garden this past week. It was a game between St. John's and Villanova. And here's the, here's the scene of what exactly happened. So St. John's had scored a basket and on the impending inbound by Villanova, the ref went to pick up the ball but noticed it was apparently all wet. And so they found a, a, a boy with a towel and they started toweling off, drying off the, the ball. But then they turned around and went back to the source and saw there was a whole puddle of liquid on the floor. So they started toweling that off as well. And then what happened next is pretty interesting. Uh, a craft beer discussion broke out in the middle of a basketball game. The announcers were Dave Sims and Len Elmore. And they, the, the cameraman got a good close shot close-up of this cup of beer that was sitting just behind the uh, the inbound, just behind the, the end zone, I, well, end zone, whatever the basketball <laughs> equivalent is. So anyway, the cameraman gets this close-up shot of it, and this launches a discussion among the announcers. Um, the one of them says, I don't know, that one looks a little bit crafty to me. Okay, oh, that, okay there's, <laughs> looked, a little, <laughs> looked a little crafty to me. And so there began this little back and forth about craft beer, and it didn't look like a normal light lager. What brand could it be? Uh, some One of the two opined that it could be something flown in from the Pacific Northwest. And then right at the, at the end of the discussion, uh, the other commentator said, well, it, maybe it's from the Brooklyn brand. And so I thought that was kind of a cute little interesting discussion uh, in the middle of a basketball game. Craft beer came uh, as a point of discussion during, during the game among the announcers. So that was a kind of interesting thing in my opinion. And it, it kind of leads me to think that, you know, craft beer is gaining more notoriety. People are learning more about it, recognizing it, knowing some of the brands, first of all, and the locales, Pacific Northwest. I, I was pretty impressed, actually, to, to say the least. So... Uh, good, good on those guys for knowing a little bit about their craft beer. This week, Anheuser-Busch provided us with their Super Bowl lineup. It's going to include four of their brands, and we'll notice something a, a little bit different this year as compared to past years. Um, most notably, there will be a tone change. Uh, so in past years, they've done this juvenile, sophomoric, you know, kind of a jokey tone, and that's going to be markedly different and lacking this year. They're going to spotlight four brands. They will be Bud, Bud Light, which are typical, Michelob Ultra for the second year in a row, and new to the Super Bowl, uh, making its debut, is going to be Bush Beer. They have a different strategy, a different advertisements plan for each one. First off, let's start with Bud Light. They are planning to do a campaign around the tagline, Famous Among Friends. And so, and although they didn't provide any details or any snapshots or snippets of these advertisements, I can kind of imagine in my mind that this is going to be buddies around the game or hanging out just uh, maybe at someone's flat or someone's apartment or maybe outside on a balcony, uh, just enjoying each other's company with some Bud Light. I can imagine maybe something along those lines. Next up is Budweiser. They are doing a campaign now for Budweiser that's going to be revolving around the founder of Budweiser. His name is Adolphus Bush. And so they're going to use him as kind of the centerpiece for all of this campaign. They're trying to mimic or uh, copy famous or other popular advertisements that have gone around using the founder of the company as, as the basis for those advertisements. And they're hoping that that will help spur sales of, of Budweiser. Uh, also, I might expect to see some Clydesdales involved. I'm not exactly sure uh, how much or how if they're going to play much of a theme at all in those advertisements, but I would expect them still to stay on point with those Clydesdales. Next is Michelob Ultra, which is going to be back for its second year in a row. 
Michelob Ultra is an interesting product of theirs. Uh, so they're trying to angle this. It's a low calorie beer. And they're trying to angle it to the fitness junkies, the athletes, the people who, after a workout, and they, you know, they've, you know, spent a lot of energy, they've sweated themselves out a lot of calories, and yet be refreshed with a nice tasting in their mind, nice tasting beer. And they're going to continue with that. They're calling that an athleisure. This category called athleisure, athletic leisure type of segment. So that's kind of where they're angling Michelob Ultra, and they've been doing that for a couple of years now, and they're going to continue on that road. Last of their four brands is going to be Bush Beer. Now, last year they started off, they, they, they had a Shock Top Beer, which was the first uh, Super Bowl advertisement for any of their craft beers, and they're swapping that one out now this year with Bush. So they're bringing in Bush, which is a, a value segment beer, and one of the things that the, uh, that the company mentioned in their press release was that, uh, you know, after the Super Bowl, usually their brands get a, get a oomph in sales, and they're kind of hoping that same oomph will take place with their Bush brand. And that's kind of why they're, they're putting a spotlight on Bush this year as opposed to any of their other brands. In other Anheuser-Busch news, uh, they, were, they made waves for a couple of different reasons this week besides just the Super Bowl announcement. But they did announce that they're going to do for the second year in a row in the summer this year, they're going to brand all of their bug cans with the name America. That will be the, the, the simple labeling on their cans and on their bottles. Instead of saying Budweiser or King of Beers or anything of that nature, it'll just simply say America. And this is the second year in a row they're doing that. It was somewhat controversial, um, or at least at least it got a lot of people talking about it last year. So maybe it was why they're doing it again, because of the notoriety, a little of a, a controversy maybe around the, the naming of their beer in the summertime, just America, as if they represent the whole country. On that note, and probably contrary to what I just said, Anheuser-Busch announced this week that they're also not going to sponsor the American Sports Athletic Olympic teams. So even though they're going to brand their summer Budweiser as America, they're not going to be American sponsors this year, uh, which is brand new. They've been sponsors for a number of years, so they, it's kind of sending contradictory messages there. I'm not sure that uh, that's going to go over well with too many people. Lastly, Sierra Nevada made an announcement this week um, that they had installed a new Tesla battery pack in their uh, brewery. The, the brewer, if you're not familiar, well, you're probably familiar with the name, but you may not know to what extent they're environmentally friendly. So they try to do everything uh, as green as they can, uh, with as little waste as they can. Uh, for example, they have 11,000 solar panels that had been installed years ago. And what this battery pack is meant to do, well, first off, it's called a, it's a Tesla power pack, and it is a 500 kilowatt or 100 megawatt hour system. And what the intention is for the system is to, uh, to tell when the power within the brewery is surging or when it can uh, start to build up a reserve. And the, the purpose of this is that the brewer is spending a lot of money on, on, uh, on their power usage. And not only just from a cost standpoint, but also from a, an electronics grid, uh, an electric power grid standpoint, uh, they're trying to, to save some energy. Uh, what's going to happen in effect is when they're brewing and they're using a whole lot of energy, uh, the, the, brewer is, the brewery is charged not only just for the power they use, but for peak surges. And so what they're hoping is that these power packs will store the solar energy from their solar powers and know intuitively when the when the power is starting to peak or when it's starting to surge and use those reserves to cut down the peak uh, surge usage of, of power. This Tesla power pack is going to create a cost savings for them so they're no longer paying the, the high surge or peak pricing of, of power usage by using those reserves instead of relying on the power grid. Uh, so secondly, that relieves the power grid of the surrounding area to use the electricity that they otherwise would be using in their high power brewing moments. I thought that was kind of a cool idea, cool system. Also because it's Tesla, it's sexy, um, grabs people's attention. Uh, it doesn't do a whole lot of, of greenness. I've seen uh, titles of articles 
where the headline mentions green beer. I think these are a little bit exaggerated, uh, not very truthful, maybe just clickbaity, because there's nothing really green about it. They're still using the power grid, but what they're doing is they're offsetting their surges and their, their peak usage by using those reserves of the solar power that they have with this battery pack, which is storing it during the low periods of time. So it's, it's a forward-thinking idea of Sierra Nevada. I give them kudos and a hat tip. And uh, I hope this spreads to other breweries who use just as much power. Sierra Nevada is a large brewer, so there may be few in the country that are comparable. Uh, but I would like to see, and I know there has been, a proliferation of, of green, environmental, environmentally friendly brewers. And I, I applaud them, and I hope that trend continues. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. That's been our episode for the week. I've been your host, Chris Hardy. This has been the Straight Beer News. If you'd like to follow me on the social media, you can do that. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on Untapped. You can find those details, where to find me at those sites, in the description of this video below. Also, if you're so inclined, if you would please, if you like my videos or like what I'm doing at all, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And lastly, if you do like what I'm doing and have seen past videos and want to continue to be alerted when I'm, uh, when I'm providing new videos, new content, hit that little subscribe button. It's a little gray circle with the Old English S on it. You can click that and it will take you to the subscribe to subscribe to my channel. Again, I'm Chris Hardy for Straight Beer News. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great week. Take care.